Good evening and welcome everybody to another edition of the Music and Mixing Show. I am DJ Michael Joseph, your host, and we have a cool night tonight because guess what we're talking about? Virtual DJ. That's right. Um, if you've never watched the show before, if you're new to this, uh, we always take some few minutes at the beginning of the show. Welcome everybody. We encourage people, <clears throat> pardon me, in the chat to shout out where they're from. And I always like to do shout outs. This is like the only place I'll do shout outs. I won't do shout outs when I'm DJing ever. Um, so if you want a shout out from me, this is the only place you're going to get it. And, and we do this for a couple of minutes, let everybody come into the chat, come in there, and then we start the topic tonight. It's all about virtual DJ. I do have some stuff I want to talk about, and I also have some questions that other people have sent in via other videos and emailed me and stuff, and I want to cover those tonight. And then we're just going to take, after that, we're going to take questions from you guys in the live chat. But just take a couple of minutes to say hello to everybody. Uh, Where you're from, let me take a quick look here. John Colley, thank you so much for all your support and appreciate that. Um, if you don't know, John Colley has a a multi, multiple times of the week uh, mix over on Twitch. You know, check him out. Um, I haven't been back on Twitch in a while because I'm back to DJing somewhat regular. And uh, I just didn't want to go back on Twitch for a while. But yeah, so shout out in the chat. We are on seven of eight places. For some reason, I can't get the feed to feed to my own YouTube page. I mean, my own Facebook page. So we're everywhere else. But feel free to give me a shout out in the chat where you're from, and I'll let you know. We got Ken from Florida. What's going on, Ken? Welcome. Ken's watching over on Facebook. Uh, San Bernardino, California. DJ Jesse, what's going on? Thank you for supporting. You're always around. Appreciate that. Uh, it's going to be a fun night, one of my favorite topics, so you know I'm going to talk a lot. I think last week, last time we did this last month, we went over. Um, yeah. Yeah. So we still have some people t tuning in. So again, so if you've never watched the show before, we always take a couple minutes at the top of the hour, let people come into the chat, shout out where they're from, all that kind of stuff. And, and then we get into some stuff. And like I said, I have some stuff I want to talk about, show you guys. Uh, I have some other questions that people have submitted and what you guys are going to submit in the chat as we go along. So kind of hold off on your questions, submitting them for a few minutes at least. Um, but it's going to be good. There's some, been some updates to virtual that we're going to talk about, some of my favorites. I mean, there's a whole lot more than just... Um, the updates that I'm going to be talking about. Let me bring that up so that I can share that in detail. Um, yeah, because I want to share that in detail, some of the changes that have been made so you guys can see that in detail. But like I said, if you're tuning in for the first time, we're always doing some shout outs. Uh, throw into the chat wherever you're watching, where you're from. I always like to see where everybody's watching from because I get a lot of international viewers on this show and I really appreciate that. Um, DJ Sports Girl, welcome back. Hope you're having a good Wednesday also. Um, it, it was a good day. Uh, it, it's been a good week so far. Got gigs this weekend. You know, that's always good. Had, had a nice one last weekend. Uh, back for playing for the uh, pro sports team that I do for the AUDL. And got to play them last weekend. Uh, Gibram is from, I'm going to just butcher this, Corsicana, Corsicana, Texas. Welcome. Thank you for tuning in. Everyone else who's tuning in, thank you. Like I said, we always do a couple minutes at the top of the hour. We're about ready to get things started. Hold off on your questions because I want to cover a couple things first, show you, and then, like I said, um, some other stuff coming up here. So we just go about one more minute. Oh, we're about there. So, All right. So once a month, I have been doing uh, an episode on Virtual DJ, and I promised you guys I would get other software people in here. We were supposed to have Jay from Pioneer come in tonight and talk about Rekordbox. Uh, he un, uh, uh, was not able to jump in. Um, DJ Sports 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 Girls from Detroit. I was going to do the shoutouts. Uh, Jay couldn't come in to do the um, record box night. We are going to either get him or another person from Pioneer to do a record box this month. I've already lined up a Serato person for next month. So next month uh, we're going to, besides, like I said, the, the virtual DJ show is going to be every month, but I'm going to try to tie in some other open question nights for other software specific ones. So that's one of the things, like I said, so we're definitely going to do a Serato night. We're definitely going to do record box night. If I can find somebody that knows Tractor well enough, have them come in. Or the other one that we are no longer allowed to talk, we don't talk about, for those of you who follow us on a Monday night thing, um, there's another software we don't mention. It begins with an M, and that's all I'm going to say. Uh, DJ Mr. Peabody, what's going on from Raleigh, North Carolina? Thank you so much. Dean Brown has given me... That was either an emoji that I can't see. It's too small or two dots. I can't tell what you're doing there. Uh, Fly Robin from Florida. Welcome. Thank you for tuning in. All right. So as you know, uh, if you're a fan of Virtual DJ, uh, they update constantly with little updates. Uh, a lot of people think just, just when they rename it and call it you know DJ 
Virtual DJ 2021 or Virtual DJ 2021 Summer Edition. These are major changes, but they're always doing updates. And if you're like me, I do a lot of... I like these little updates because it gives me things, tools that you may not use that are important to me because there are things that you might find important that aren't to me. So that's kind of what, you know, paying attention to all the updates is going to help a lot about. And I'm, I'm absolutely... Um, uh, a fan of keeping things up to date. A lot of people are like, hey, you know, I got Virgil DJ, you know, seven, should I update? You know, and I'm thinking that's like five versions ago. I actually person asked me about 2018, and I'm like, 2018 is a long time ago. Um, so if you're not up to date, 2021 is a 64 bit only program. So keep that in mind. So if you have some of the effects and different things that you are running from uh, the 32 bit, not all of the 32 bit effects. The audio effects, visual effects, all that kind of stuff work on the 64-bit Virtual DJ 2021 or what they're running right now. They're calling it the 2021 Summer Edition. So, And yes, I do talk a lot with my hands. So what we're going to talk about is some recent updates that came to the standard log. And for those of you who know, I also do another show on Disc Jockey News. Uh, it's three minutes or less on any time like virtual DJ updates or maybe some of my favorite setups or different things like that. It's called VDJ How To, all one word, VDJ H-O-W, and then the number two. And it's as simple as that. And uh, I covered a lot of these updates when they hit the early access. And we're going to talk today about the standard access things that just came about. So we're going to switch screens over to there. Um, someone just tuning in from Huntington, West Virginia. DJ uh, uh, David Chad Midcott, what's going on, man? Thank you for tuning in. So we're going to go over to the left screen. Okay, and let me make sure I'm out of the way on this one because I was not last time. All right, so right now, can we do left zoomed or is that going to do virtual zoomed? No, that will work. So as you see right now here in 6503, this is the standard log access right there. So you can do standard log or early access. I let my studio computer do the early access. This is kind of like a past beta. It's a beta, but it's a past beta. And then the standard logs when everybody else gets it. And you see there's some uh, been support for the Heath and Allen uh, Exone mixers, which uh, came out a while back. Um, uh, support for the CDJ USB database. Uh, uh, the CDJ tag thing has been updated to where it covers user one, user two fields. Uh, that is in the tag edits. Um, there is a section there called user one, user two that you can do hashtags there. And you can also push the hashtags now via the CDJ. Uh, it supports a uh, 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 beat port. Uh, being used with the M1 processor on the Max. Split pages, I'm going to show you what a split page is today because I like these and have been waiting for them. Uh, I had them before, we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, uh, fix the video recording for the M1 processors because M1 processor is different. Uh, it's getting a little bit of uh, uh, trouble all around the things. So we're gonna, you know, it's glad to see some of the programs that are really kind of starting to adapt to it now. And the Remember Recurse, again, I'm gonna talk about that one because nobody ever, 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 ever uh, uh, very few people use that except for me. Um, uh, DJ Sprosco said they don't have 2021 because sh they don't work to connect to Vir Windows 7. That is correct. Uh, it only works. Although, although this is the truth. I have had people tell me that they have had the Virtual DJ 2021 work on, on 7 and 8, but they've told me that it does. So I don't know if, if they do a trick. I probably should ask. Um, I've been on Windows 10 for a long, long time, so I, I can't help you much with that. But again, there are some things you're going to get by going to the 2021 64 bit version that you don't on a 32, but for the most part, it works the same. All right, so we're going to talk about the, the two or three things that, I, that I, I liked already. And one of them is one, let me switch over here to bring virtual up, and then we're going to go left screen. Hold on here, let me move some stuff out of the way. Left screen. There we go with my virtual. All right. So um, over here, I'm going to zoom in on that again. And then I'm going to move this over here. So over here, uh, this is a, just a, a favorite folder that um, is a shortcut from if you go up here to local music. I want to make sure you're seeing because last time I had stuff cut out. And you go to drivers uh, and then under C, I'm uh, sorry, not C drive, but D drive. Uh, DJ music so on my D drive on both this computer and my other computer this is the file where all my music is in and all I did was make a favorite folder to put it right there um, for those of you who don't know what recurse is uh, if you look at any folder and you do a right click on it you're gonna see recurse there and recurse basically what it does is it makes 
uh, virtual scan that folder and all the folders inside that folder because when you do a search in the browser for a song it doesn't just look through your folders what it does is by doing that recurse it creates a text database of your songs and where they're at so when you do a search and it comes up so fast it's not searching the whole file it's looking at that data that text database that you've created by recursing um, I recurse a lot so that if I add new songs that it's always catch it so I can search them they're always there it's just kind of my way of doing that a lot of people love the recurse to the point where I've actually created because I wanted it to be an ongoing recurse I ended up creating a filter folder um, with recurse actions in it so that every time I clicked on that filter folder it gave me an automatic recurse well they have now added to this uh, any folder you want to do uh, you can make it so that it remembers the recurse so all you have to do is go up in here into let me move some stuff around go up here and you're gonna search in your options for remember recurse um, if I can spell there we go remember recurse yes or no no means that it does not gonna remember it and I'll show you what it does by remembering it yes means that it remembers it and I'll show you what remembers it means so I'm gonna click on this and there's a check mark there so if I click that again the check mark will go away so that means if I click off that folder and back on that folder nothing's going to happen but if I click on here and do recurse remember uh, it is recursing it you can see that it's scanning the, everything that's in there and by having that check mark as recurse see it's check mark there I can click off that folder and every time I go back to that folder it's recursing it's checking it again now you might not want that it is going to take up resources as you're DJing but I want it to do that and that's one of the purposes that I like this I, like I said I created this filter folder a while back um, sorry that's off the screen there whoops I created that filter folder a while back and that was what it did but now all I have to do is click on that and it recurses automatically every time that's a thing it's not for everybody I like it it's for me okay so again that's not everybody the next thing they added was the split uh, cues which I absolutely love uh, for those of you who do things so let me just throw a song up here um, the different cue points that are in there they're gonna fill up your buttons here uh, you can switch this off to be anything you want it to be you can have it be a slicer that's that's the whole thing about the pad modes they can be anything you want them to be loops etc but before aside from doing some sort of MIDI mapping which I had done before the MIDI mapping to have one row of your your hot cues be one thing one row of the buttons be one thing one row of the buttons be another they've now integrated that into simple drop downs so all you simply have to do is um, is go over to here let me make sure everything's showing yet so you go over to here and you pick what you want it to be so I'm gonna do hot cues um, I lost my hot cues I lost my hot cues someone took my hot cues um, I can't find my freaking hot cues. Uh, filter noise loop 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 loop. Um, what what do you guys do with with my hot cues? There they are. I had the wrong filter, so it's this button right here. I I am gonna switch back to the stock screen because I know this messes people when I when I use my personal skin. So it would be this drop down right here. Okay. So I picked hot cues, but the split cue allows me to then add something separate to the bottom deck. So all I do is go here and then split page, and then I go over to split page. Let me move this up just a touch so you guys can see this a little bit better. Um, so I go to split page, and I can pick something else to put on that bottom row. Now I have created an auto split cue uh, folder there. Uh, I'm sorry, a bank. So if I were to go in here and go edit. Uh, I went in here and I created uh, I have my custom audio stuff so each one of that bank of the custom audio knows what I wanted to be their audio effects and I also created one that is um, custom auto split cues and that puts uh, four different ones across uh, one two three and four okay as you can see that changes there and those are now going to be put in this row so all I would have to do is while this is on hot cues click here split page and then pick whatever one I want to be on the bottom of that audio split cue which I've already made one here and this is what it looks like so what it's going to do now is that if I'm playing this song I'm going to turn it down so that we don't get in trouble with um, uh, the copyright police there we go so that should not play so I have my my cue points there jumping all over the place uh, let me bring this down so you can see a little bit better there we go so you have your hot cues then you have your effects uh, like a break stop and different things like that. Um, did I do that right? Boop. Hold on here. 
Here we're gonna go hotkeys, and we're gonna go custom audio split. Didn't do that right, did I? <laughs> I set it up once. So there's the hotkeys here, split page, um, custom audio split, and there now you see them at the bottom. I apologize for for slipping on this. So you have your hotkeys. And then you have different things down here like echo, flange, you can see it flange, I mean the beat grid, the flipping doubles, uh, that's an echo and then a cutout which is a transformer type thing. But these can be anything you want. So I can go in there on the split cue thing and then pick uh, loops. So the top is now my hot cues, but I can also loop. And that can all be on the same pads on your controller. Um, that's one of the other things so that you have eight pads. If you want to use eight pads as hot cues, you can. Uh, you can simply just go back to hot cues and it makes it back your your cue points back but if you want to double them up or and and or save that because all you have to do once you've done the split is uh, it lets you have a choice to save it and you name that whatever you want it to be and that's the other thing like I said that I like about this is the split cue gives me that option that's one of the newer things uh, that is in this latest update version uh, and they have just they have just moved this over to uh, uh, public act the, the early the standard access not the early access so I did the videos for them there are, if you go to youtube.com forward slash disc jockey news and search for VDJ how to two of my videos are on that and some other things and uh, those were I did the videos on when those were on the early access so you hear me say on there that oh it's in early access this number this number and this number they have now been moved over to the public access so you if you have virtual DJ 2021 you can update to all of that stuff right now um I, I'm going to try to balance between answering you guys' questions and some of the ones that were submitted because I had some people submit a lot of really good questions, both via videos and directly to me. And uh, I think some of them are good, are worth talking about. So I'm going to start with the questions you guys have, and then I'm going to go into some of the ones that were asked and covered those to make sure I cover them because I think there's some really, really good stuff that some people have asked so I'm gonna go back to the chat uh, feel free to drop in um, uh, questions into the chat wherever you're viewing from um, um, David said he's a tractor user uh, but he's willing he's he's open to switching I have a tractor question actually because one of the guys asked me how to convert over his tractor playlists to uh, virtual DJ playlist. Now, here's one of the things that, because um, I've not spent a lot of time in Tractor, okay? Uh, Tractor's playlists are, um, uh, what are they? They are um, um, N NMLs, and virtual DJs are M3Us, which is, most of you know those is just a playlist. Uh, so you can't directly drag and drop them over. You have to convert them to an M M3 U M. M3U file. I'm getting caught up on these. But one way to convert them is go to a site called... Um, let me move this over here so I'm not constantly switching things. There we go. So there is a site called uh, uh, MuseConvi. However that's pronounced, I don't know. And within there you can convert things like playlists and one of the things they have is to convert it from... It's a software you download for Windows or Mac and you can download your tractor playlists and convert them to a virtual DJ M3U. And that's pretty much all you have to do. You can do a bunch of different conversions with these, but that's one of the ones that they have, and it just lets you convert them over um, to different types of files depending upon what you're using there, Spotify files and different things like that. Um, but it, to convert them is that way. And then if you go into your file hierarchy system, I need to zoom in on this one. Um, within your virtual DJ folder that usually documents virtual DJ, uh, depending on where you're at, and you go in and you convert this file, like you said, to an uh, to an M3U, and then all you have to do is go into playlists and drop your playlists in there that you've converted from your your tractor. Drop them in there, and now you have your tractor playlists in virtual. And I, like I said, I thought that was a good question that he asked. It was um, who was it that asked that? Um, Rob. Rob Jean Lewis, Robert John Lewis, Jean, Jean Lewis. I can't even say that right. Thank you for that question. That was an awesome question. Um, but yeah, for the tractor people. So I'm going to switch back over to the chat and hit your questions here. Um, 
Uh, yes, finally someone said it right. I'm not sure what I said, but awesome. Um, uh, uh, how to connect up lighting effects in Virtual DJ. Now, here's the thing. I, I did a video on this a while back. There is a protocol that some light systems use, and I can't remember what it is. But if you have a software, like one of the virtual softwares to do that is, we'll go to the virtual page, because I actually want to show some other stuff on the virtual page. Um, let me do the whole page, there we go. And if we go to downloads, and we'll just start with the audio effects, and we're gonna go into other, and um, see if I find it this way. Um, that's it. So if you have uh, lighting controllers, uh, 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 Sweet Light, Show, Show Express, Quick DMX. It does work because it's that OS2LX um, uh, 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 protocol that it uses. So if you already have a software that does not use the OS2L protocol, uh, you're not going to be able to control your lights with um, Virtual DJ. But if you, Or if you want to switch to one of these softwares that runs the OS2L protocol. And all you do is load these in. Uh, download it, load it in, and like I said, because remember we said that these play, uh, um, uh, hot cues can be absolutely anything you want them to be. All you do is you go in and create one, create uh, effects to it. Do I have a lighting one in here or not? Um, yeah, there's a DMX one in here. Yeah, so the DMX one's in there, and we're going to go to edit, and we'll go to DMX. And you can, let me zoom in. And you can see that there's already uh, a buttons for the 2SL button. So that means that this pad one running through whatever soft lighting software that you use that is an OS2L protocol, you then have on yours where you create your blackout and then you just MIDI map the button to the action through this into your lighting software. And I hope that's not too confusing because I am the absolute worst when it comes to DMXing. I'm absolute terrible on it. Uh, maybe we can get someone in one night and talk about this, but that's basically how you do it. But the big caveat is that OS2L uh, protocol that it uses. You can do fog machines or anything you absolutely want to do with them, but that's kind of how you do that. So let's go back to the chat. Um, how do you make double from one side to the other? I think you're talking about either an instant double or a clone, and that's actually very easy. Uh, left screen. So there's a couple ways to do it. It all depends upon your, your mapping. You can also create a, 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 what do you call it? Keyboard shortcut, because if I'm correct in mine, I'm not sure if it's on the studio computer or not, but in my mapping of keyboards, I should have, um, it should be a clone deck right there. So if I do control shift, what that's going to do, it's going to clone the deck. And the reason I, I chose to map control shift is that's what Serato uses, and a lot of people are used to it. So I just mapped in there uh, to the control shift. So you can see your key right here, control shift, and clone underscore deck, and it clones the deck. So just by doing that, it will clone it. Let me see if I watch it not work this time. Um, I need to clear this deck. Um, I totally can't tell you how to, how to clear a deck on. Um, the standard, uh, oh, it's there. I'm used to my skin, so I'm not sure how to do this. So if we do the control, um, um, I just forgot what it was, because I never do it this way. Um, um, control, what was it? Control, shift? Clone deck, control shift. Yeah, I, I don't use it this way, because I do it a different way. So if I go control shift, it should kick this over to the right deck. Yeah, so it started the right deck, and then I can stop the left deck. And all that was was me hitting the button there and uh, clear that deck out, and I can clear it back to the other one by Control-Shift, and it brings it right back and stop that one. But one of the ways that I do it is if you go onto the scratch screen uh, on mine, so I'm going to switch back to the skin that I use, um, which I use the Controller 2020 by Denyo, it's called, and I do my own edit. And uh, I like it because I want to have more real estate to see the songs. And a lot of times I will run it in this, um, what is it? It is the, uh, what mode is it in? Deck setup, it's the smaller mode. Uh, variation, two deck middle. 
So I normally run it like that because I want a lot of songs there, a lot, a lot to be able to see there. But if you go here, and uh, for me to get rid of a song, instead of hitting that button on this one, I just right-click uh, on the stop button, and it does it. But on this one, if you go to the Scratch Decks, um, uh, it's not Scratch Decks, it's Master or Scratch Decks. Yeah, Scratch Decks on the uh, Variation um, Q-Deck Big. And right next to your Crossfader is your Clone. So just dropping those in there like that, and I would stop that like that, and clone deck, and it's just like that. So if you need to switch between two. Um, going back to that, hope that helped and understood. Uh, like I said, I like to go into map just because I it's a shortened thing, that it's a, it's a control shift, but I, I do uh, uh, so little of that, really, that it's maybe once a month that I end up doing that. Um, Yes, Serato. Okay, uh, Tommy, thank you. Tony, sorry uh, for tuning in. Appreciate that. Um, yes, Serato Q Point should show up in here, vice versa. Uh, Serato uh, Crates should show up in here. Record Box Crate should show up in here. Record Box Q Point should show up in here. Uh, with one of their new add points that you can then drag stuff down into a thumb drive. I'm not showing that screen. <laughs> you, can, you can drag stuff down into... Um, the CD export right here, and what it does is it takes uh, all of your cue points and all your information from your virtual into a thumb drive that you can then take this thumb drive and put it in a, either a Pioneer or, or a Denon uh, Prime system that takes thumb drives, and you can DJ from that uh, from the, C, the from the um, thumb drive that you create, the flash drive that you create here, and it does transfer over all the cue points and everything. So I kind of like that. Uh, Peter the Hubcap, dude, what's going on, man? Hope you're doing well. Um, it's a busy season out there for you now, I'm guessing, because things just opened up. Uh, he, he's in Atlantic City. Uh, get to hang out with him every year at the DJ Expo. I don't know if I'm going to the DJ Expo this year or not. Haven't decided yet, but we shall see. Um, going back here. Uh, feel free to throw in questions. We still got time. I'm going to hit a couple more that were, were sent to me that I think are good ones to do. Um, who was it that asked about the... Um, I didn't write down the name of the person, unless it was the same person. Uh, a person commented about IDJ Pool uh, and VDJ having all the mixes. Um, all that that if you use the IDJ Pool uh, online stuff, which you know you guys know that I do, I really like it a lot. Um, so if we go over here and we're gonna go to um, uh, um, online music and IDJ Pool, I can search for a lot of stuff. So I'm just gonna search for Drake. And I know I do that every time, um, but because it's the le least amount of stuff I have to do. Uh, if you look at this, uh, this is the streaming service they do. And you can do, with this one, it's really cool. It's $10 a month. And you can offline as many songs as you want. All you have to do is log on once a month to show that you are still subscribed. And it will let you play these songs offline. But you can drag and drop them really easily, really fast. Um, again, I'm using a lot of power here doing this program. Uh, so when I show you how fast this loads, it's probably going to be much slower than it loads on my DJ computer and also because I'm doing a lot of stuff right now. But we're going to drag and drop and boom, that quick it loaded. So right now if I lost uh, Wi-Fi or, or connection, internet or connection, um, I could still play this song. But his question was not about that. His question was about the fact that all the ones in there talk about that it's some sort of explicit mix, clean mix, uh, intros, stuff like that. And he said, why don't they have album cuts? And that's one of the things that I kind of want to you know, let make people know because I didn't even think of that because to me, a DJ uses mixes like this and he wants like the album cuts or the radio cuts. So with this show, it's primarily about the mix DJ. It's what I focus on, uh, people who make their living from the ability to mix, not how many lights you put up or how you speak or presentations, none of that. It's about the mix DJ, and we use nothing but these. We never, ever, ever, ever use standard cuts, or rarely. We only use them, I guess, when we have to or whatever, because we most of the time, uh, if I'm going to DJ anything, even old songs, I'll go and grow an intro edit or something like that, or create it myself. I just don't mess around with a lot of stuff like that. But if you do want the album cuts and a streaming version, so this is this is the key here, that if you do need the album cuts and you want streaming, um, you go here to, instead of using iDJ now, use Deezer. Deezer is just like Spotify. It has a million more songs than Spotify, but it has much less subscribers. And if I were to type Drake in there, you're going to see a lot of stuff here. And we'll all this up here. Oops, hold on. I want you to see this load. 
This is from this is from um, Deezer. So drop, and that quick I could play it. Um, the only difference is is that with Deezer, you're going to get either the album cut or the radio cut. It's the plain, no intros, no outros. It's not going to tell you clean, dirty, nothing like that. These are just standard cuts, and um, so that's an advantage of that to have that. Uh, the other the disadvantage is that you can't offline any of Deezer songs so you have to be online to play these songs from Deezer I like them because it's an emergency thing to go to if I don't have something I can go to these for an emergency I don't have to leave my program nothing but that's the difference between the two he wanted radio cuts and he subscribed to the IDJ pool or the album cuts whichever way you want to call that uh, and which IDJ Pool gives you all the DJ edits. If you want the plain cuts, use something like Deezer, Beatport Link, and Beat Source Link are going to have some of those uh, um, album cuts. Title will have the album cuts also. So that's your your choice of what you want to do. But I choose this, and that's why he was going there and saying, you know, uh, it doesn't have any of the album cuts. I don't want that. That's why because I use those. So that was another question that someone submitted. Um, back to. Um, the thing here, um, Victor says, anyone have the Alice issue with Virtual DJ and Mac? I'm not sure what that is. Feel free to explain to me, even if you have to do it via uh, direct message, uh, uh, Victor. I'd like to learn about that. I don't use Macs, but I would like to learn about that. Uh, Peter the Hubcap, dude, the answer to your question, he says, the offline downloads expire after a certain time. Um, as long as you're subscribed and you have your machine go online at least once every 30 days, I just say once a month, because whether it be 30 or 31, to prove that you still have a paid subscription, those songs will stay there. But if you drop your subscription, whenever that 30 days is up, that's when you lose the use of that. It will still stay in your folder and show as a little green thing, but you can't play it until you resubscribe, and then you do it that way. It's just kind of how that works. But the Deezer ones, you have to be online. There's no subscription. I mean, you have to still pay for the subscription, but it works just like uh, using Deezer or Spotify on your phone. You're just kind of using them as you play them, and you don't get any kind of keeping. Um, I know Spotify does do the offline stuff, and so does Deezer, but they did not work that into this. So, um, Throwing in questions from the outside. We still got a lot of time. I'm definitely going to hit a few more that, like I said, the people submitted here. Let me see if I can find one here. Um, oh, someone asked. <laughs> this is Lonis Lorandis asked the question on the Virtual DJ How To Episode 24. What is the skin you're using and how can I add my logo to the turntables? Which I get that a lot. So if we go over here to the left screen, you can see I have my logos in there. And it doesn't really do anything. It's just there's no purpose to it other than customizing and showing off as a mixed DJ and what we do out in the clubs. It's all about one-upmanship, so I'm always trying to do things uh, to kind of do stuff like that. But these come into, um, if you go also back into your Virtual DJ folder, there's a skins folder right here. And I'm going to zoom in on this and move this up here. And you see different skins that are going on there, okay? So the one I use is the Controller 2020 by Denio, okay? And I have my edited version here. So if I open up this one, and then I look at um, image, PNG, and I'm going to open that. And I'm going to take me a second here to see where it's going to open. It's going to open over here. Okay. And the person who made this one will allow you to put the logo right here. So you just erase this and put your logo. So if I go back to here, um, sorry, nope, go here. And then I go up to my version and open up image, you will see mine's down in the bottom corner and they also have the other version there which I don't remember which one it is oh no I moved that over to the other folder so this is still using the old one that has the single the new one actually has double right there as you saw in the other one and that's the difference between the two but that's pretty much all you have to do with those is just if you have a, a like a, a program that can run PNGs uh, edit you know like a, a Photoshop or anything like that that's how I edit I put my logo in there and it literally this skin lets you do it and all the skins are different where it's put um, if I can find one of the other ones here, let me go back to here and find where's the default. Um, so there's Dan. I have I have skins for everything. I have a Serato skin. I have a Record Box skin. Um, is this the one with the double? 
Yeah, this is the double one. I forgot about that. Yeah, here's here's the newest version with the double for smaller or bigger, depending on, on what skin you're using there. Um, but there is other ones, and I can't remember where it's at. It's one of the defaults. Um, uh, I think this was from Virtual 8. So if I go to Virtual 8 and look at 2-deck PNG... Yeah, so on virtual eight, that's how I had to put them in virtual eight. Those lines were there. Those that's your that's your needle line that goes around, and that's where I had to put them in virtual eight. So you just kind of have to get in here, edit these things down, put them there. It's kind of simple if you know how to do um, uh, editing with with a, a like I said, you know, um, any any editing software that will work with PNGs and and different things like that. That's pretty much all you have to do. So that's how I got my logo on the thingy dewey <laughs> on the skin so let's go back to the chat questions right now uh john jazz joined us what's going on hope you're doing well uh I will, again i'll take any questions you guys have throw them in the chat i am picking up people from both facebook youtube and i think we're also over on twitch uh, tonight on Disc Jockey News' Twitch page, which is twitch.tv forward slash Disc Jockey News. Uh, we were doing a music show over there once a month because over there we can play music without getting the show shut off halfway through. Not too many people tuned in, so I then rotated it into this virtual DJ show. Which again, I also do another show over on Disc Jockey News called VDJ How To. It all this, all of those videos are three minutes or less, and they cover little updates and different things going on. Um, I think I have like 30... Uh, of those. This is episode 95 of this one. I have a couple hundred of another show called um, um, uh, The Rewind Report. And the Rewind Report covers any kind of new gear whatsoever that comes out, and I have uh, a couple hundred of theirs. I'm also on the Monday Night Chat Show with John and Dan, so you can join me Monday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern Time on that. Um, all kinds of stuff. I do a lot of stuff. Uh, uh, I DJ. This is my full-time job. This is what I do. And uh, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. All right, I'm going to go back to the questions list, and if you have a question, shout it out. Let me pick another question here. Um, um, <laughs> tractor, that one's one there. Uh, another person asked a question. Uh, Mutamba Audrey Matenga. I, I am terrible with names, so if you're watching, I apologize. He said, hey, I want to know, I always have volume issues when I'm playing at the club. People are using Serato and have an output that's louder than mine. Is there a way to fix that issue uh, a device internal gain audio uh, gain and remember and and drivers and I'm going to talk about all those right now. Uh, so one of the things is that some pieces of hardware have a built-in gain for mics and audios, a built-in sensitivity to platters that it's a mode depending on what you're doing. Like on my Denon, I will hold down two buttons and power it up. And then it goes into that mode. It's not connected to a computer. So this is the programming within the hardware. So I know that might kind of sound confusing. So I hold down two buttons, power it up, and it puts it in this mode that lets me choose different things. So if I think my mic isn't loud enough and I can't make it louder through the software because most mics on most controllers are hardware controlled, just like most headphones are hardware controlled. Most of them don't go through the software. They stay controlled by the software in the hardware. So by doing that weird boot up mode, you can go in there and bump the gain on the mics, on the main volumes, you can bump the sensitivity on the platters, all kinds of stuff. So my first question would be to him is to, to put his uh, device, which what did he say he was using? I don't know if he said what he was using. Um, he didn't say what he was using. But put it into that mode and see where your gains are. Uh, just the flat out gains because it could be something in a hardware that kind of makes it go you know a little quirky you might have a bad whatever channel or whatever um, and check and see if that gain helps second is something that I always use and I'm telling you I swear by this to the end of the earth um, is and some people don't I don't care whether you do or don't I'm just telling you I like it it's auto gain and remember um, and it's a little thing that you can do auto gain and remember no auto gain, auto gain, remember, and auto gain and remember. So remember means if you turn it, your gain, it will remember where you left it for that song. Auto means that it adjusts for that song, but readjusts every time you load the song. Auto and remember does an auto gain on every song you load and remembers where it's at. So it keeps, it normalizes via the internal gain, not your outside knob. But via this gain, I'm not sorry, this gain knob, wherever the gain knob is for that, um, 
Um, I can't see the gain knob. There it is. On this deck, they're right there. So uh, it would then uh, adjust that on this gain knob, not your physical gain knob, and remember it. So if I go back to here, I'm going to load a few songs, and we're going to see if we can see this gain knob move by stuff that it has already um, checked on. So I'm just going to start dropping stuff in there, and we're going to see if any of Right there, you saw that one move, because that song apparently is a little low, and it auto-gained it up just a bit to make it normalize with the rest of that. Next one's back down to normal. Uh, let's see if I can find another one here that maybe is adjusted a little bit. Um, like I said, it just whenever you need them, it does that. And they could be a little forward, a little backwards, whatever you think it might need. Um, all these are pretty normal. That, that one just bumped it forward just, just a bit. Um, so that's what that does, the auto gain and remember. So if it's not maybe the hardware, the auto gain and remember is another choice you can do. But the other one I think is important is that when I switch to the 30, the, from the 32-bit to this 64-bit Windows, uh, I'm sorry, uh, um, Virtual DJ 2021, uh, if you go into your audio interface, and you can see that there are two different types of drivers you can use. You can use the ASIO or what I call the Wasabi. <laughs> and the uh, what that stands for is Windows Audio, what is it, crap now, Windows Audio Sessions API, uh, which I call it Wasabi because it looks like Wasabi. I found, at least in my machine, that the ASIOs did not work as well because the reason they switched is they have discontinued support for these and Windows created their own audio drivers. So I had problems with the ASIOs being really, really hot. They were You had to have it just right or they would peak out real quick. Soon as I switched to using the Wasabi drivers, everything went perfect. So that would be the other advice I would give to you that if you're having trouble and you're running the 64-bit program, switch off of the ASIOs and use the Wasabis and you might find a little bit better sound. Like I found a lot better sound. Like it was immediate from the point where it was too high to where I didn't have to do a thing. Because Virtual does allow you to also have um, internal uh, uh, headroom that you can put in there. Um, so if I go in here and go to um, audio, and I'm looking for, is it headroom? Is that what it's called? Um, what is that called? There's, there's, it's a setting in here that you can do uh, uh, where it gives you, I never remember, there it is. Gain and sync, uh, you can do auto gain, uh, you can do, uh, um, Give, you're giving it plus or minus the headphone gain. See, this one I bumped uh, a little bit down uh, because the headphones were a little strong for me. And you can set room in there and you can back off the gain from scratch in inside the program without moving a knob to then if you want more headroom but still want the full use of the knob, you can come in there and adjust some things like that. And that's one of the things that I think is really cool uh, with virtual. It just lets you set everything the way you want to set it. Um, so let me go back to, oops, not the intro. There we go, too many buttons. Let me go back to the chat and see what kind of questions we have here. Um, uh, I'm trying to see whatever is going on here. Um, are these archived to stream later? Yes. All, all of my shows, both the little pre-recorded three-minute ones and these shows, all stay on Virtual DJ. I'm, not, I'm sorry, stay on YouTube.com forward slash Disjockey News, and you can rewatch them there anytime you want. Um, I encourage you to share, like, and subscribe if you could, please. Um, like I said, this is my full-time job. I get to, the blessing to get to work with, with Disc Jockey News and all the different stuff and get to cover the expos and get to hang out with you guys. Um, usually each evening on our DJ uh, and TV Insiders area, if you want to know about the Insiders area, it's basically uh, uh, both a free and a paid area to get additional educational stuff that is not on YouTube. We, we keep it behind a, a paywall, but there is a section of it free that you just sign up and you can get the free stuff. And there's a, a monthly thing that you can do to get the other stuff. And some of it is from the biggest people in the industry that have taught lessons on stuff. And you can go in there and watch them anytime you want over and over and over again. Um, if Robin, Robin is in the chat, drop in the chat. One of the things we started doing back when lockdown first started is that we gave a Zoom room for DJs to go and chill out and talk to. It's called the DJ and TV Chill Room. And each evening, like after 10 p.m. sometime, uh, people go in there and they just sit and talk for hours and hours and hours. Not necessarily about DJing. It can be about anything. But they're just a bunch of DJs who hang out. Sometimes I go in there. I was in there last week till like 
was it two in the morning or something? Um, but um, that's something you can check out there uh, for that. Plus all the other shows we do here on Disc Jockey News covering all the wedding sites. So if you're a wedding and mobile DJ, there's a whole lot of shows that cover that. Um, I try to focus on the mixed DJ because that's what I do. I mean, I, I never do mobile DJing. All I do is clubs and bars. That's in sports events and stuff like that. So, um, going down the list here, run Sonic mix master BBE VST. That's you're talking about normalization there, Joshua. Um, I just do this cause everything I do, uh, uh, tag editing, everything. I don't leave virtual DJ for anything. It does everything I need it to, but if that works for you, uh, uh, good. Um, DJ Discwar Disco Worm from San Francisco, welcome. Loops are not queuing exactly where I want. Here's the thing. You can set the... Again, virtual lets you set everything. And that's that's what I think some people don't like virtuals because um, it, it lets you automate everything the way you want it to. So you can do... Um, let me change here. Left screen. Uh, zoomed. Uh, there's different loops that you can do. You can quantize them to where it it, it, it jumps on exactly. Uh, you can do loops forward, backwards. Uh, but one of the things that if you go into the looping area, and it is under, it's going to take me a second to find this because I haven't used this in a while. Is it here? There's all kinds of like little short menus. Um, smart loop and, and stuff like that will end up putting it. So if I go here on this one, and you see my cue point, right? Let me grab that. There we go. So you see my cue point, right? No, you're not there. It's the wrong screen. There we go. Okay, so that cue point. So if I were to stop that and move that somewhere, because I have it set on smart loop, it's it's not going to put the loop there. It's going to put it over at the down point marker um, or the next down point marker. So that's what it's doing is it's finding the next down point marker because I have them set up to snap to the down down point markers, which is the one, two. And if I switch over to the other screen, because I know you guys don't like this one, um, the default. Um, you can see it's there. And if I put the loop in, it's going to snap it to that. And that's the whole purpose that you set those up to where you snap them and it snaps to that. Um, I think it might be over here. Smart loop, loop direction. That's the forward, back, or smart, where you can actually set it up to loop forward from where you're your center line is or backwards from where your center line is. Um, that's your choice. Uh, Quan's eyes and the smart loop is one where it's going to put it on. If I turn smart loop off, then if I'm correct, it's been a while since I've had smart loop off. Uh, turn that off and it should just smart loop from right where I'm at, I think. Um, that's the smart cue and then the smart loop. Um, or is it the Quan's eyes? I think that might be the Quan's eyes. So. Yeah, there you go. So if you have Quan's eyes unchecked, it's going to put the loop wherever this center line is. Um, but if you have it Quan's eyes checked, it's going to put the loop at the nearest downbeat marker. So I hope that answered your question. I'm not sure. Thank you, Robin, for putting that in the chat, the chill room. Um, a lot of fun they have in there talking about everything in the world. Uh, I was in there one night where we had a long discussion about our first cars and, and to hear somebody tell stories. And I got to tell a story about the cheap little thing that I had uh, for my first car. So I appreciate that. Um, thank you, Bill. Appreciate that. Uh, uh, you're, you're, uh, I'm, glad, I'm glad it's helping. Um, I still end up having questions here that um, uh, the people ask. I can still hit those. Or if you guys have some stuff, we still have a couple of minutes that I can hit answer some of those. Um, I love Virtual DJ. I have been using it nonstop for over 10 years. Um, and one of the things that I'm kind of proud of, and I, I think it's in this, because this is this is my studio computer and then my DJ computer separate. And I think it's still in here. I want to make sure it should be. So history. Yeah, so if you go into, and I think there's some missing in this one. Um, if you go in here, you can see my playlist history for the past 10 years. I think there's some missing in 10. So if you go to 11, you can see stuff I played uh, um, January 28th, 2011. So um, this might have been an 80s night because there's a lot of... No, there's 50 Cent in there. There's mashups. That was the era of the mashups. There were a lot of mashups. But I'm proud to have over 10 years of uh, uh, playlist history for Virtual DJ. I absolutely love it. So uh, that's kind of a, like a little show-off thing. I didn't mean to flex there, but it, I'm kind of proud about that. I um, love it. It does everything I want. And if you were to sit down with me for an hour and, and I show you just what the changes I've made, you'd probably, your brain would hurt. And I there is a video of a VDJ how to video on Disc Jockey News' YouTube channel of my picks of the things that I changed in that 
config menu because if you go in here, one more quick thing here, you go into the config menu and you go into options, you can pick what you want. You can pick automation, controls, interface, but you can also choose stuff that you have edited yourself. So um, um, where is it at that you do the um, show modified? So these are the ones, when I click this, it's going to show everyone that I have modified, that I've changed from stock. So as you can see, all of these, I've changed from what it is in the stock setting to what I want it to be. All kinds of different stuff. And like I said, this is one of the things that I believe in with Virtual DJ, that the I don't have to fit the program, the program fits me. And that's one of the things, all the different things, the settings, the specialty effects, the resolutions, the, the uh, uh, frames per second on your video, um, all kinds of stuff the touch you know your, your your threshold your spin forward spin backward adjustments for your your platters um different things like that video frames per second on the one is 20 on this computer it's 24 because i don't have it up high here because i'm sharing it with so many things but on my dj computer that's running at 60 frames a second and my output is also running at 60 frames per second so i'm seeing 60 frames per second on the screen that i'm looking at and they're seeing 60 frames per second on whatever video thing that i am uh, broadcasting too. Um, but again, that's why I like it because you can do 101 different things with it. Um, set anything you want up to it. Effects, uh, panels, um, again, just everything. Uh, auto, auto, auto headphones. Uh, auto headphones means that when you load a song that it automatically sets the cue headphone to whatever deck you just loaded. And I don't want it to do that. I want it to pick myself. Um, that's what they also the PFL, the pre-fader listen on select. Um, I do it myself. I have it set as manual. So those are all the settings that I have with that. And there's a, a thing out there that talks about that. So we still have a couple minutes. I try to stop before the top of the hour and I will answer anything else you have you want to throw in there. Um, but otherwise, uh, definitely we'll be back next month doing this. I'm going to do the virtual DJ one once a month because I think people like it. I know a lot about it. So it's easy for me just to ramble endlessly about this. Um, there's more questions that someone asked that I will get into next time. I'll save those. And I'm sure people are going to send me more between now and then. And uh, when uh, it's a filler time, I can hit some of those questions because I think some of the questions that they asked were stuff that you guys can put to use pretty well, too. Or at least, you know, hey, that's good to know sort of thing. And that's kind of the purpose of all that. But again, I en encourage you to follow me on any of the d social medias. I'm DJ Michael Joseph everywhere um, except Facebook. I'm DJ Michael Joseph, the number one and DJ My Michael Joseph, the number two. And the same for YouTube. Um, I'm on all of them. You can check out what I'm doing. I have a webpage, djmichaeljoseph.com or immj.com. Uh, and I have like 80 some mixes there that you can listen to from 15, 20 years back. There's stuff in there. Um, uh, again, this is my full-time job. Uh, I, I would encourage you that if you like what Disc Jockey News is doing, either subscribe to the DJ and TV Insiders area or find out where our um, uh, uh, like uh, 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 PayPals or different things like that and um, kind of feel free to, to give to us. Like I said, this is what I, you know, this is what I do for a living is DJing and this. This is it. So this is my job. And what I te tell you and teach you is is from me. So um, uh, now people are hitting up with a lot of questions there. How does bleed work on the stems? Bleed is basically all it's doing is, is that instead of that, if you know how a stem works, if you ever used like Ableton, a stem, what it's doing is it's pulling out certain tones that are fit within a vocal or within a kick drum or within a melody and it is reading where they're at and it's cutting out the different things that are on there and sometimes the cut will cut too far into the vocals or too far into the music and it sounds weird the bleed all it is is that it's you are manually moving that to where it sounds better so if you have a lot of bleed to where you're trying to do just the vocals you might have too much adjust on there and it's taking too much of the vocals out by adjusting that bleed you're backing it off a little and you are going to pick up some of the music but you're getting more of the vocals sounding more naturally and that's what the bleed is there for um uh joshua uh you must not know me because vdj he said vdj jd in the house i country mix with vdj um <laughs> I'm not going to say anything. Everybody knows I don't like country music. so And I grew up on a, on a, on a giant farm, so I, I'm allowed to say that. So Joshua says house. I'm not sure what that is. Is that your favorite style of music? Because if it is, I'm with you on that one. I love house music. I love anything dancey. Absolutely love anything dancey from back in the disco era to modern day house, uh, a tech house, down tempo, anything, whatever. Um, all that fun stuff. So we're about to top of the hour. Thank you guys for tuning in. 
Uh, again, feel free to drop me questions outside of this. Uh, check out stuff that I'm going on. Check out the different things that DJ and TV is going on. They have live shows almost every night of the week. The Chill Room, all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, those of you who update quick on my book, I'm still looking for an editor. Uh, I hope to have a, the books finished. I hope to have the editor do the, all the little things that they have to do with it, and it, hopefully it's out by this year. My, I think my first time to promote it is going to be in Vegas at the Mobile Entertainment Expo. That'll be the first time probably I'll do that, and that's February of 2022. Um, books take time, and I want to do this right because I want it to be good and helpful. Um, it's about creativity, but that's coming up. Um, at the end of every one of my shows, I try to do some encouragement uh, because uh, I've been blessed to have uh, the opportunity to do this for a living. And I, and I write about that in my book that, that I don't make as much money as I used to in corporate America. I made a lot of money in corporate America, but I was completely unhappy. I was sick with stress. It was miserable. So I gave up a, a much larger income to have uh, freedom uh, to create and do stuff and that's a form of wealth that I have and I, I want to encourage you to try to find that spot in your life um, those of you who um, probably don't know there's a guy and I know some of you are going to know this a show called the red green show um, I love the red green show and I'm going to be po posting this quote later this week but red green said this and this is what I'm going to end the night with red green says most guys would rather make big bucks doing something they hate than a comfortable living doing something they love, and I want that to be on your um, on your mind when you're when you're doing these things. Whether you're just out DJing on the weekends for part time work, um, our job as a DJ is to get to celebrate with people, and I just want to encourage you. Sometimes it gets crazy, but try to enjoy it because it's a special thing we get to do, you know, and get to celebrate with people. And I, and and I want you not just to do it for the money. I want you to enjoy it too because that's being able to smile in, in something you do for a living is a big deal. So I appreciate that. Um, oh, we have somebody tuning in from Trinidad. Trinidad House Music. No, uh, sorry. Um, <laughs> two people are just shouting stuff out now. I'll check out more questions next time. Until then, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other because it's a crazy world out there. God bless everybody.